All right, welcome back guys. We are here for Saturday's training. So our final day of training for the week, we're gonna get kicked off with our warm up. We got a lot of exercises to talk about during this warm up. So a couple things we got first to get that heart rate up a little bit. We've got some jumping quarter squats. So all I want you to do is feet in your squat stance. You're only gonna squat down Again, quarter squat. So we're not going too low with this, but we do want to feel butt cheeks engage, weight in the heels, and then you're going to jump as high as you can for five reps. We're then going to perform some high knees in place. We're then going to do some lunges. So I'm going to step out 90 degrees on both, drive back to full extension, alternate legs, and then I'm going to perform some butt kickers in place. There. Once that's done, again, that's going to get the heart rate up, get the juices flowing in the legs. Then we have a little bit of dynamic opener style stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit some elbow to instep. So a nice long step here. And we're gonna drop that elbow down to the ground, add a twist. Again, it's up to you guys what variation you wanna pull on that. But we're gonna do that on both legs. And then once we're done there, we're gonna hit some fire hydrants. So for those, we're gonna be in a tabletop position. Knee is gonna stay at 90 degrees right here. And from there, I'm gonna try and keep my low back flat. And I'm <laughs> echo. So from this tabletop position, again, knee is at 90. I'm gonna go ahead and press out to the side, feeling my glute engage, and then bring it back down to center. Press up, back to center. And the goal is again, not to lose those low back positions. So I don't wanna see a lot of movement in your hips and your low back. We wanna keep that relatively stable across. Then I've got straight leg glute pulses. So for those, same tabletop position, I'm gonna go ahead, leg is nice and straight. It's parallel to the ground. And I'm gonna squeeze my butt cheek to basically end range of motion and then come back to parallel. Squeeze, back to parallel. Again, really isolating the glute and targeting those kind of outer hip muscles to get things going. Then the last piece of my warm up is gonna be a Superman hold. So I'm gonna come down to the ground and I'm just going to squeeze everything in my back and get into a nice arch position. Toes together, hands at shoulder width, and I'm just gonna hold that for 20 seconds. That's gonna wrap everything up for your warm up. Now, for today's strength work, we have Bulgarian split squats. So for this movement, <clears throat> what we're looking to do is find a below parallel position on the front leg and find a stretch in the hip flexor and the quad on the back leg. So ideally, you need to find an object that is high enough that allows for those two things to happen. So for me, I'll go ahead and come up on the arm of this chair here. I'm gonna take a big enough step out that my I've got basically a straight line and I can comfortably get into what we'll call normal squat positions. So what that means is that as I descend, my hips comes back, my knee tracks forward naturally, and I'm able to get down below parallel before standing back up. This is actually a little too high for me. So I'll go again here. Boom. This is basically a perfect position. I would want something in between my first height and my second height because I don't really want my back knee to touch the ground here. I want to keep that tension in the bottom of the rep so that I don't uh, you know, have a tendency to relax or anything like that. So chest is up nice and tall, normal squat positions on the front leg, back leg, getting a nice stretch in that quad and hip flexor. So we get the added benefit of a little bit of mobility work as well as a little bit of strength work. So plenty of bang for your buck. And you can hold weight however you like. So you can do a goblet version, you can hold weight in your hand, you can back rack the barbell. It's really up to you guys. There's also a really great balance component to this exercise. So again, a lot of different kind of aspects of fitness that we're targeting here, which is perfect. We love exercises like that, especially for this at home program. Now, for today's workout, we've got a Tabata. So what that means is you're gonna do 20 seconds of work followed by 10 seconds of rest. So we're programming the rest for you each interval in the hopes that you'll be able to work for as much of that 20 seconds as humanly possible. So your four movements in order, you're gonna be doing pull-ups, you are then going to be doing push-ups, we're then gonna be doing sit-ups, and we're then gonna be doing air squats. Key thing here is that if you don't have access to pull-ups or ring rows, you're gonna go ahead and do American kettlebell swings. So again, I'm gonna drive a kettlebell from my hip crease all the way up overhead for a full 20 seconds, hopefully being able to go unbroken that whole time. So again, just kind of keep that in mind. The American kettlebell swing should be relatively light if you're gonna be scaling in that way. Now, 
As far as movements go, again, we've got push-ups, sit-ups, and air squats to talk about. If you have access to a pull-up bar, fantastic. You can hit kipping or pull, uh, strict pull-ups, or you can do ring rows if you have that option. Now, for the push-ups, as far as our scaling option goes, we want to make sure that we're elevating the ground if we need to. Um, but today's a great day to do RX push-ups if you have them, even if it's not going to be a ton of reps. So again, if you've only got you know two, three, four, five push-ups at a time, no big deal. Get a small set in, rest quickly, and then try and hit them again. Now, for the scaled version of the push-up, we're going to bring the hands off the ground, and then what we're really going to focus on is the midline. So we want to make sure that we're not getting sloppy in these midline positions. One of the most common flaws that you'll see with a push-up is as they come off the ground, chest hits, hips hit, and then there's a little bit of a relaxation and the hips end up kind of low here. Again, what that really is, is that's essentially a knee push-up masquerading as an RX push-up. So we want to make sure that we start to teach ourselves to maintain those midline positions and keep any semblance of weight off of our hips or our lower body. And the best way that we can do that is by scaling these push-ups appropriately. So again, hands on an elevated surface, Midline positions are locked and engaged. I'm gonna to touch my bra line to the ground and drive back up. Because if I were to do what I just demoed earlier, I would very much notice that loss of position, whereas I may not uh, notice it quite so much when I'm doing push-ups down on the ground. So that's your push-up. Next up, we've got your sit-up. So it's just gonna be a standard butterfly sit-up. Feet together, I'm gonna to sit back. Hands are gonna to touch the ground. And then I'm gonna throw, sit up, touch my feet keeping the chest nice and tall at the top, and repeat. Then the last movement for today's workout is gonna be our air squat. And again, I've said this before, but the air squat, it's the most basic squat variation we have, and that's why it's super crucial and important for you to do these as well as humanly possible. Your overhead squat will never get any better if you don't focus on doing perfect air squats. So for the air squats today, Again, we wanna make sure that the weight is firmly rooted in the middle of the foot, my toes are gripping the ground, and then as I sit down, my hands and my chest stay nice and tall until I get below parallel, and then I'm gonna stand up hard and fast by squeezing my butt cheeks. So don't cut that range of motion and don't let that chest get sloppy during your air squats for the workout today. That's your workout. The last thing we have is a little bit of accessory work and we have a farmer's hold, and you're gonna accumulate time in a farmer's hold. So if you don't have access to some heavier weights for you, then you can do a plate pinch version. So I can, I mean, I can probably barely plate pinch this, <laughs> but instead of gripping it like this in a full grip, I would grip it like this. So I would grip without using the fingers. So I'd grip kind of here instead of here. And again, that's just an easy way to make the movement more challenging if you don't have access to an appropriately challenging weight for you, whatever that might be. And again, get creative with uh, heavy textbooks around the house or anything like that. But you're just gonna accumulate time in there, working on the forearm, strengthening, getting a little bit of grip work in to finish up your week. So that's Saturday's training. Enjoy, tag us, Forged by Zeus, Palace.Fitness, and we will see you guys back next week on Monday to kick off another week of training.